hello Bame Farm fans. It's the day after anhydrous, so it's June something. We're gonna wanna put the forks in. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I'd move those out to move a round bale last week, which was right after we got the fertilizer delivered. I have to move them even closer, because now I got it. A little crooked coming on the approach. Lift your tips. Yes, this one last pallet. Other lift. Not quite as simple as a, a regular forklift. The approach on this one is a little crooked there with the step up into the barn. But yes, we're going to plant today, finally, into something that's not a puddle, hopefully. Hopefully not a puddle, we'll see. Um, and it's been, you know, we know it's wet. It's gonna rain a bunch more. There's no side-to-side -side tilt, so I have no clue how to help in this scenario. And with a whole lot of fancy clutch work and getting up the hill, now everything is going in just fine. We're going to put a couple skids of fertilizer on the hay wagon out there. Um, have enough ready to plant that's fit and mildly not too wet, mostly hilltops, ridges, places that are usually okay after four inches of rain, except for when it, you know, rains four inches multiple times per week. Okay, well, we have liftoff. Let's see, where'd the fertilizer come from? Kentucky. Uh, it always seems to get the bag fertilizer out of Kentucky. I don't know if that's made to put in like the side dressers for tobacco. But even the... Um, well, this is the second company we've ended up getting fertilizer from out of Kentucky. The other... We, uh, we only switched because this is where the local farm supply is getting it from. Um, and we ended up trying getting a new local farm supply because the last one he retired on us I don't know why he's playing with this right here I decided to stop on a hill and adjust the pallet of fertilizer well eventually we'll make it over to the wagon this front end's too light. Okay, I get to be heavy, I guess.
bags. I wonder if those are bigger bags. They say 50 pounds on them. Maybe it's just the style. Center it. What? Are you gonna push it to the center? To. Okay. on how this plan is going to go down. Whether it'll be a push, or if there'll be any lift, but it seems like there's not going to be any lift. And we're just going to try to push. Shiloh, give us a push. but I guess the top of this ash is slick enough that things will slide. And if you look across, of course the camera lens will make a funny angle. There's a slight bow up. So instead of spreading out the weight for more friction, we have it pinpointed on smaller spots. Now let's get another skid. This one should spear better. That's how I've been dealing with hay too much. If you don't spear a pallet, I guess you slide the forks in. <clears throat> oh, we gotta move our extra thing. Now, who did? That's gonna be a dangerous skid. I can foresee that falling over. Ugh. So we had ordered fertilizer. Well. In advance. Like, I don't know, back in March. <clears throat> Trying to be prepared. We never picked it up because it kept raining. We didn't want to go in the rain to pick it up. I, mean, I guess that would have been nice to have the box truck, but there's only so much room to park stuff around here. So, just to have the box truck for planning. Um, well, obviously, that was sold last summer. But yeah, just to get the fertilizer to leave it on the box truck was rather convenient. Uh, he's gonna run over that pallet. I know he might miss or touch it just a little. No! That's probably good. Well, good thing we have this nice open top tractor. It's easy to get off of it and get out and check and see what's going on behind the planter. Yeah, hello, Bame Farm fans. It's still June 4th. I want to come back here and dig around, pick any row. I want to dig around slightly, see what we find for seed. We've got uh, some dry on top, a little bit of moisture, plenty of moisture, lots of moisture, and it will rain tomorrow. Sort of gently dig down. Why I brought my pocket knife. So I found a seed. I got lucky and I found a seed right there. Didn't disturb it. Using our lovely pocket knife guide. We'll make a guesstimation that between this little knob and the end, oh, it was a solid two inches. Which were late enough, so it was warm enough. You know, being deep won't be an issue. And, uh, well, we'll be okay with that. Um, moisture won't be an issue, but we're up here, if we can't tell, uh, we're high up, because on the other side of the trees, everything slopes down, we're on a ridge top, so the water has to run away. 
Oh, mark that seed. There's a seed. Okay, we're gonna dig and hopefully find another one. Do to do. Oh, okay. Right there. Our target population. Oh, most people probably want to plant more. We're aiming for 27 to 28,000, maybe 27,500 or so. We've got good spacing, about five inches apart. Maybe four. Four to five inches. So, the seed's going in. Looks like a good depth. We're covering. Uh, Brad got this dist up real nice yesterday. Uh, put on hydras down up here in the dark. That was not fun. So, yeah, we'll hop on the tractor. Let's get to planting. Isn't it so patriotic? Blue. Red and white. Oh. And the greens in the trees. It's handy any pocket knife. We'll need that. Oh, let's go for fourth gear. Because we can. Plant about four, four and a half miles an hour. It's a lovely plate planter. No hydraulics or fans. Squealing and making lots of noise. A couple of the neighbors have those John Deere air seeders. Sound like somebody's got a broken Dyson. Now we've left a little space between the field and the grass. Well, the field and the trees. A, it can be a little sloping, and B, it's not going to do much anyway. Get that outside row right out there as close as possible. Oh, we've got about 15 to 20 acres ready. That's all that's dry. Ish. We made this dry a lot with tillage. I will say that much. Okay. This is going to be fun. We're gonna make everything squared off. We're gonna put seed here anyway, because I said so. I hate rounded corners. Which we'll have room to turn around the combine. The biggest thing while planting, especially corn, is planning out what in the world you're gonna do when you harvest. So how to lay it out. So we'll lay out a couple, couple of headlands. Actually, we'll do three headlands. Figure 12 rows is enough to get the combine turned around most of the time. Put it down on the move. The marker is dropping. Perfect. Let's give it the juice. Now let's go up a gear. I know, it's not quite a power shift. Planting on the curve, we're going to run with the marker about running the corner of the hood. Should get our row spacing about right. I hate when row spacing is just a little too wide. However, squeezing the two outside rows isn't always good. Might as well go open top, enjoy the sunshine while we got it for a few more hours till we get dumped on for the next week. And then just hope this drains well enough. Left our little waterway to catch some water. It's not pretty. Didn't always get the uh, tillage tools up in time. Watch your marker. It's just delightful. Good sunshine. Great breeze. Everybody's out planting or trying to do something around here. There hasn't been a whole lot done before today. Ugh. Got a rock underneath a fertilizer opener, it sounds like. Come to the end. Don't want to drop too many seeds while we're moving. 
So we'll burn a little bit of clutch. The seed we're putting in, you know, is probably worth a nickel a seed versus the seed we'll sell, which is worth less than a penny a handful, right? dig this out. See, this is why I hate planting after dark. I wonder if this is the row I heard that rock scratching around. I wonder. Come on, mud. Probably not that muddy, though. We hadn't had issues with this before today because we planted a few acres of sweet corn with it. <sighs> Damn. I really got something wedged up in there. Good jeez. There's that rock I heard squealing around. Yeah. There you are. Come on. This is where we pinch a finger real good. What the? Hmm. Okay, you gonna behave now? Are you gonna make this a bear of a day? I think you're loose. I had this thing all tightened up before. Now this could get interesting. Don't wanna have to pop the cap off. Well, let's take another round and see what sort of mess we can make. the 
wrong marker will go down over here. This is the straightest side of the field, so we'll plant from this far side. Oh, we're still turning. Just have to keep an extra close eye on it. That'll be the one to watch. These are new to us fertilizer openers, but one of them didn't match the rest. Well, and as far as use. Oh, I'm gonna want a faster gear here. Well, we'll catch you guys later with more fun planning action, give you updates on the next refill, see how it's going. Oh, well, I'm thinking of it. I guess we'll throw this tidbit. Yeah, so I'm planting 112-day corn. Uh, it's a variety we've been planting for many years now. Uh, but mostly we have it for silage now. Uh, but we have more than we need for silage, so it's still less than late. Or less than early. Not too super late, I don't know which. I'm going to try to put it in the ground now, because we already found some mud. I'm going to have to do something about that. I'm going to have to bust that opener apart and try to get it to tighten again. Oh. Well, I have the wrenches here for that. I got some wrenches in the toolbox. And yeah, we'll make something happen. I'll get to the end and play with it. It's still dropping fertilizer. Ground's worked up nice. Shouldn't be a big deal. Let's see, the seed we're planting is a flat. It's a kind of a small flat. Mildly disappointed in that. And you know what I didn't do? I didn't put the marker down. So that wasn't a very good pass at all. Oops. Oh, that's just how things are going right now. Thought we had this all figured out, and now it's just being a pain in the butt. <laughs> 